After weeks of speculation, Albany, Des Moines, even Greensboro, North Carolina, it turns out the Zags are staying close to home. Gonzaga getting the number three seed in the West region where they will face 14th seeded Grand Canyon to open up the NCAA tournament. An outcome everybody's happy with. Man, I really didn't know what to expect. I just didn't want to be in New York or North Carolina. You know, I wanted to stay on the west side, so Denver, you know, you can't complain with that. Not that it matters where we would have played, because I think we'll be fine anywhere, but New York's way too long of a flight. I was not excited about that. I was going to have to download like three movies just for that plane ride or something. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm going to uh, play somewhere close to Spokane, so I think we have a good turnout of fans, hopefully. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's March. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we don't really care about seeding. At this point, everybody's earned and fought their way to get into the tournament, so we're just grateful for that, and we don't care who we play. You know, at the end of the day, you got to roll the ball out, and we got to play. I've done this long enough to see that if you even for a second think about looking at the next round, you're going to get sent home. So uh, I just think that's kind of where uh, the experience within this team lies is we know. We know what's ahead of us and we know that like you really have to take it game by game because the moment you don't is the moment you get sent home and you're crying with your teammates. Guys, the way you beat St. Mary's, it seems like you guys are playing your best basketball right now. Would you agree and how good is that to be playing that right now? Oh, yeah, not nah, for sure. I mean, that, that was a... Uh... That, that was a fun one to be a part of, and I feel like everybody, you know, got going, you know, one through ten. Everybody was, you know, having fun, smiling, and I feel like that's huge. And, you know, to, to be riding high coming into the tournament, you know, is something that can really help us. Are we going to get a 40-point game from you in the tournament? I hope so. <laughs> Gonzaga versus Grand Canyon will tip off at 435 on Friday. You can watch that game on True TV. Reporting from the kennel, Travis Green, Crypt 2 Sports. All right, I'm now joined by Gonzaga's all-time career scoring leader, Drew. Timmy Drew, what's it like to hear that? <laughs> it's, it's weird. It still doesn't feel right. And, uh, but, man, it's pretty cool. I can't lie. Even now after you've had time for it to set in? We've been so busy with Vegas and preparing for this. So like, it's just kind of like I'm just zooming through time right now. I'm losing track of my days. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that one. Well, today you find out the three seed um, in the western uh, region. Just what's your thought on that? It's great, man. Super excited that we're able to play in Denver. I mean, uh, being from Texas, it's an easy way to fly. I got to fly to Denver to get home most times, so I know it's an easy point for all of our Zag fans to pop out, and we're super excited about it. Yeah, Grand Canyon in this first round. How much do you guys know about them? Um, not that much, to be honest. We know that they have their backs against the wall, and they they well more than rose above the occasion to make the tournament, and they're a hell of a team, and it's going to be a challenge. But uh, you know, Roger and uh, Kurt have uh, worked for Coach Drew before, so, uh, you know, they know us and we know them pretty well, so it'll be a fun game. Right. Uh, they won six of their last their last six games. I know, obviously, they weren't a favorite to make it to the tournament, but winning the WAC tournament. So, a bit of a hot team here. Um, but you guys are also coming off a tournament championship where you played your best game of the season, arguably. Do you think, like, it's a clash of two hot teams? No, yeah, and uh, that's the dangerous part. It's who's going to burn out first, <laughs> and hopefully it's not us. <laughs> I do. I've been talking to a couple of the guys about this. Have you looked into the bracket past this first game much at all? Nah. I mean, uh, I've done this long enough to see that if you even for a second think about looking at the next round, you're going to get sent home. So uh, I just think that's kind of where uh, the experience within this team lies is we know. We know what's ahead of us, and we know that, like, you really have to take it game by game because the moment you don't is the moment you get sent home and you're crying with your teammates. Yeah. All right, when we saw Wes, I know Albany was one that was up there. Des Moines, <laughs> how happy were you guys to just be like, hey, we're sitting close? I mean, not that it matters where we would have played because I think we'll be fine anywhere, but – New York's way too long of a flight. I was not excited about that. I was going to have to download like three movies just for that plane ride or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey there, guys. I'm with the 40-point man himself, Julian Strother. Julian, uh, just what are your thoughts on today? Uh, I mean, it's a special day. I mean, every, everybody around the country is all tuned in to, you know, see where they're going to go play next. And uh, I feel like it's a testament to all the work, you know, we put in to offer this moment to see where we go for this March Madness tournament. So I'm uh, super excited. And talk about the matchup, Grand Canyon. What what do you guys know about them heading into this? Uh, I mean, obviously they're hot. I mean, they had to win their conference tournament to, you know, get here. And, you know, they're riding high. And, you know, they can really shoot the uh, shoot the leather off the basketball. So, I mean, we're we're super excited to you know get to, get to know them more and you know get, dive into um, all the scouts and everything like that. But I mean, I know they're they're ready to go just as much as we are. Yeah, and we just talked about it off camera here. Uh, the West bracket, mm -hmm. it was all up in the air. You know, mm -hmm. we were hearing here in Albany and all that. Just, are you happy with West? 
Oh, no, I'm super excited, you know. I know Zag fans travel really well, and, you know, they're going to try to make their way down there to Denver. And then, obviously, you can't look too far in the future. But, um, I mean, if we can make that second weekend, it'd be, you know, back home in Vegas. So that'd be huge. Yeah, how, how cool would that be for you to be back home in Vegas in the NCAA tournament? Uh, that would be, like, the biggest moment ever for me. I mean, you know, March Madness is something that you always dream of playing in. And to have that moment back at home would, would be amazing. But, I mean, obviously, we can't look past anybody, and we have to, you know, handle business starting Friday. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Raj about this. Uh, you guys, the way you beat St. Mary's, it seems like you guys are playing your best basketball right now. Would you agree? And how good is that to be playing that right now? Oh, yeah, not nah, for sure. I mean, that, that was a... Uh... That, that was a fun one to be a part of, and I feel like everybody, you know, got going, you know, one through ten. Everybody was, you know, having fun, smiling, and I feel like that's huge. And, you know, to, to be riding high coming into the tournament, you know, is something that can really help us. Are we going to get a 40-point game from you in the tournament? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I mean, okay, that's certainly, I think, something that will – try to take advantage of. I mean, obviously they see see these things for a reason. So theoretically, I mean, you end up playing much more difficult opponent, uh, especially opening uh, round and, and even second round. But, you know, I've found that, yeah, they're, uh, once you get into this thing, I mean, everybody's earned their way in in some way, shape, or form, and it's always going to be a really, really difficult game. We've had very difficult games as a one seed. so. Uh, I, I know about Grand Canyon. Uh, Bryce does a great job. I've been following him uh, for a while, you know, obviously because of my relationship with Scott, but also because Roger uh, Powell worked under Bryce. And, and, uh, uh, and then know Jerry Colangelo. I know Jerry Colangelo very, very well. He's a big part of the whole Grand Canyon uh, growth of the, the, not only the basketball program, but the whole school. And uh, so that it's going to be a really, really tough uh, first round matchup. Did you watch him last night? Watched a little bit of it last night. Was bouncing around, uh, uh, watching all a bunch of different games. Yeah. yeah. You, I talk most of the years, then it's more wide open. And as we got to the end of the year, they're saying there's six or seven teams, maybe as one seed. You buying that? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they got to six or seven. I didn't. I heard that same comment. I'd be surprised at that. I, certainly, I think. The way UCLA was playing down the stretch, I'm sure they were under consideration, and uh, um, uh, you know I don't, I, I don't know if anybody else was. Yeah. What's this like seeing uh, Boise State at the bottom part of that bracket, uh, seeing Leon uh, a possibility down the road, but you know. Yeah, that's a that's a long ways down there. Uh, uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, it, he, he's done an awesome job and and uh you know i think they've yet to win a game in the in the ncaa tournament they got a great uh uh, uh shot uh this year and and uh again they've just uh had another really 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 solid year down there coach can you talk a little bit about uh not having to go you know all the way over to new york or something and instead you just get the denver and just for the fans also. yeah for sure no i think that's one of the great uh you know, tweaks and changes that they've done, you know, with the NCAA tournament is just a real effort to, especially if you're a top four seed, to keep you somewhere close to your, uh, or in some proximity to where you're at. You know, it was really screwed uh, up this year. When you look at a map uh, of the sites, it was crazy how, uh, I mean, even Denver is almost Midwest, you know, and, and uh, there, there weren't just any sites they were all, when you see it actually on the map, it's, it's unbelievable how many are, you know, definitely on the eastern side of our country. So maybe there is something to the East Coast bias. You guys played uh, 10 teams that ended up going to the tournament, including a number of two, three seats. How do you think that non-conference and playing St. Mary's for time helps you guys here? I mean, I think it, it, it has to help Theo. I mean, it just, it, what we've, we've seen at all basically from you know Zach Eady to just the the relentlessness and the pace of uh, Alabama uh, you know the, the the incredible physicality intensity of Texas uh, so I mean we've seen a lot how different how much progress you guys think you made from December to now? I think we've made a lot I, I you know I was talking to the guys about that uh, today is as I think B Mike brought up a, a stat as only my analytic staff could, but uh, um, 
Uh, this is the lowest turnover rate we've had, I think, in the entire run we've had, you know, which surprised me because I know we've had some teams that didn't turn it over very well. But, uh, I mean, that's what they were saying. And if you think about what our issues were back in November, it was turnovers. And so these guys really, um, you know, heeded the warnings and and listened to what we were saying and, and took the coaching. And we've taken great care of the ball, you know, knock on wood, uh, uh, down the stretch here. And then I also think, I, I mean, I like, we're a lot tougher than we were. I mean, I think the young guys have gotten tougher and more physical and a little more gritty, definitely, than they were in November, January, or excuse me, November, December. What about Nolan's growth at the point guard spot from the first day to last week? He's been really good. I think he's one of those guys that has done a good job understanding, taking care of the ball. You know, I think with Nolan, sometimes he gets a little too caught up in whether his shot's dropping or not. We're just always trying to explain to him that there's just so much more to the game than just that, you know. There's, especially at that position, you know, you're, you're kind of quarterback in the whole club. And, and we've really been after him defensively. I mean, and I think that's where probably the, those young guards have made their biggest jump. Did you already get a text from Scott? Uh, uh, I have not looked yet on that, but uh, I'm sure it's common. We talked yesterday, so. Uh, they're, they're the same, right? Yeah, yep, yep. It's too bad no bubble. You get to relive yeah, the well, yeah. Day. Well, no, it's not too bad, no bubble. <laughs> no, I think we've all had enough of the of the bubble. <laughs> it's not it's not too bad. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, and the Drew, I mean, awesome for their family. Their dad's a wonderful man, and I'm sure it would be great. Yeah, both both those guys there, but uh, yeah, it'll, it's an interesting little uh, group. Hey, the the one that nobody's talking about, TCU's really really good. I mean, I watched them numerous times, uh, and really athletic. And Jamie's got them playing a lot faster this year. And I mean, they went into Kansas and I think won by twenty five or something at Kansas. And I think they've had to deal with a lot of different injuries and stuff. But when they're full strength, I, they are really something. How's Brad's comparing the pickleball towards his brother? Uh, he never made it down there that whole uh, week. Well, he was he was out early, <laughs> so uh, he didn't get the full 30 days in the bubble like Scott and I did. Coach, can you talk a little bit about being in that West uh, region and seeing Kansas, seeing UCLA, just all the good teams in there? And, I mean, it's just it's just like another non-conference run for you guys all yeah, I mean, the most important thing is that's a long ways off, you know. I mean, you just have to, you got to just survive in advance. We have to survive in advance with Grand Canyon, literally. And I think the seeds kind of mess with people's minds that aren't in our industry, and, and it's just not how it is, and especially when we talk about how crazy the year was in college basketball and just how the amount of parity and how tough it is to get any kind of win. I mean, we experienced that in our league this year, right? And you just go through all of uh, Grand Canyon's games. I just did that before I came out here, and just every one of them was close. You know, I mean, it, every single one of them looked like it was maybe a one or two possession game. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's hard to get too into what's down the road in the bracket. And But, uh, you know, obviously watched UCLA last night. That was a heck of a game that Tommy in Arizona uh, pulled out. And I've, and I've got to see uh, uh, Bill's team a lot this year, too. I, unbelievably impressed with the job he did, you know, with what, what they lost and get them all the way back to number one seed. Does this day ever get old for you? No, it doesn't. It, it really doesn't because it just, I mean, I know, I mean, there were days, I mean, we walked out of the gym, and, you know, heck, all the way back to the Tennessee exhibition or the Texas game, and you're like, you're, you know, there's some serious doubt creeping in whether the streak will stay alive, you know, because it, I, I think that's confusing for all these Zag fans and people have been around. You get, you, they, they come up to me and they say they can't wait till March Madness. And I'm like, well, you have to earn your way into March Madness and we haven't earned our way in yet. And there's, I mean, there's, because of the job the all the teams have done here, there's this incredible almost spoiled attitude around here where you're just going to walk in and, and, and win. It's just not how it goes. I mean, you got to fight and scratch and claw and, and survive, and whether it's injuries or, 
you know, just maybe guys not playing up to what, what we thought they were going to be or all of that. So uh, I think we experienced that a lot this year. And so I think that's what I told the guys in there. They should never, ever get to the point where they don't appreciate this day because it's, you know, what's happened at Gonzaga, you know, these 25 straight or whatever is, it's unbelievable. It's, it's as, as big a story as probably ever in the history of college basketball, if you ask me. So, uh, um, and as I told them, I, I stood in that locker room, you know, on this day three years ago, and I had to explain to, to Admin Gilder and Ryan Woolridge, who transferred here to play in this tournament, that they couldn't play in it because it was getting shut down because of COVID. Uh, so, no, I never, ever, ever <laughs> take this for granted, ever. All right, hey there, guys. Now joined by Anton Watson. Anton, uh, obviously burst onto the scene this season, had a fantastic season. How are you feeling heading into March Madness? Man, I'm excited, you know. Um, this is what it comes down to is March. You know, everyone's excited. We're playing good basketball, so I think it's going to be fun. What are your thoughts on the seeding and the bracket? What, what are your thoughts on all that? Man, I really didn't know what to expect. I just didn't want to be in New York or North Carolina. You know, I wanted to stay on the west side. So Denver, you know, you can't complain with that. <laughs> not much travel for you guys. No, nah, not too bad. About two hour flight. So, you know, that's I think that's where we wanted to play. Have you looked into the bracket at all, like looking forward? Um, there's a t TCU would potentially be the next matchup and Kansas in there. Just what are your thoughts on the bracket as a whole? Yeah, uh, I looked a little bit forward. You know, we just got it about 20 minutes ago, so I didn't <laughs> do too much research. But um, our, our side of the brackets, I think, is pretty tough, and every single game is going to be a grind. So, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. But, you know, the West, yeah, the rest, West region is going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah, definitely look at that. Uh, Anton, just now that the season's here, you've been working towards this the whole season. It, it's it's here. What's it like for you guys heading into this? It's crazy, man. Um, the season felt like it gone gone by so fast and really only got a month left of basketball, you know, so we got to enjoy this time and, you know, work our tails off to get the wins. Hey there, guys. Now it's joined by senior guard Rajir Bolton. Raj, uh, Obviously, a great way to finish the season out there at the WCC tournament. Do you feel like you guys are playing the best ball you have all season right now? Uh, for sure. I think, uh, you know, I think we played great our last game out. You know, we really put it together on the defensive end. Uh, we really, you know, showed a lot, you know, a growth throughout the season. And, uh, I think it was a great show. And I don't know if it was our best game, but it was definitely a good one. All right. And that heads you right into March Madness. Now you found out today the three seed out in Denver. Just what are your thoughts on it all? I'm just excited, you know, uh, just to sit there and really, you know, figure out where we're going, you know, who we're playing, seeing the matchup, seeing Grand Canyon. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to play. You know, got to wait till Friday, but I can't wait. And how much do you guys know about Grand Canyon? You know, it's not exactly a team you, I would imagine you know a lot about. Um, definitely no disrespect to them. Um, we we just found out, uh, you know, they got a, they got a really good guard. They got a four man that uh, makes a lot of plays for them. So uh, really, just uh, you know, throughout the week we'll watch a lot more film. Uh, I think just kind of figuring out who we're playing from the show was exciting for us, but. Uh, We'll definitely dive into film, and we're not taking anybody lightly. You know, they, they had to fight to get here. I think they won their last six straight uh, to get to this point. So, you know, they're definitely not coming here to just just be a part of it. They're definitely coming in to win, so we definitely got to buckle down. Right, that time of year. Yeah. Um, so I've asked a couple guys about this. Have you looked at the bracket as a whole, like your region, the West region, or have you not really looked into that too much? Uh, yeah, just from the from the show. So, uh, yeah, I kind of saw where we got Kansas as our one seed, uh, a couple other teams. UCLA, in there. So is, UCLA the is the two, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll play, if we win, we'll play TCU second round. So uh, just, uh, yeah, there's some familiar teams in there for me. Uh, but, you know, can't, can't overlook the first game at all. Right. And for you, yeah, Big 12 yeah, experience. Yeah. What's, yeah. Does that help you? I mean, it's been a little bit, but does it help you at all? Uh, it's just fun, really, for me, just to uh, kind of see, you know, old teams and play them again and, you know, be able to get back, you know, whether they beat me the last time I played them or I, I won the last time we played. Just uh, really just kind of having that experience again and playing them again is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, Raj, obviously this is your last season, right? Yeah. So how much would it mean to you just to go on a run here for you guys? <laughs> it mean the world to me. You know, I think it would be a storybook ending for any senior. So uh, that's the plan. You know, we're going to go up. We're going to go out here and practice, you know, play hard, play hard in the game and see what happens. But uh, for sure, I would love to win it all. All right, now joined by uh, not so little, but little <laughs> Ben Gregg. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing, man? Hey, Ben. Uh, so, obviously, March Madness, you guys just found out the seating, all that. Just what are your thoughts on it? I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm going to uh, play somewhere close to Spokane, so I think we'll have a good turnout of fans, hopefully. 
Um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's March. It's going to be a lot of fun. How excited are you guys to see Denver go on the board? Because there was a lot of talk, potentially Albany, yeah, Des Moines, yeah. Greensboro. It was kind of all over yeah. the place. How excited are you guys about going to nah, Denver? No, nah, we're super excited. I mean, like I said, I mean, Zach fans always travel well. Um, so I think they're going to they're gonna sh come out and show out. Um, it's going to be a, hopefully a home game for us. You know, uh, um, hopefully, hopefully we uh, bring energy for them. Yeah. Ben, I've, I've asked a couple guys now, and it's it's different on what they've said. Have you looked into the bracket all that much, like deeper than game one? Nah, if you overlook anybody in March, you're going to get upset. Um, so we're taking it one game at a time, um, just survive in advance. That's the motto in March, and we're gonna, that's the plan. That game one, Grand Canyon, How do you guys know anything about this team? I mean, they're they're hot right now. They obviously won their, won their league, um, so they're capable of winning games, and they're on a roll. Um, it's going to be hard to beat. It's going to be a hard play game. Um, but I think we play hard like we do. We can handle business for sure. Will we see a Ben Gregg step back three in March Madness? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. It's a rare, but uh, I, hope, I hope it comes out again. <laughs> hey there, guys. I'm now joined by Malachi Smith. Malachi, uh, first year here, first March Madness as a Bulldog. Just what are your thoughts on everything today? Uh, excited, man. We've been waiting to play, so good to know we got a good matchup on Friday and ready to go out there and compete and continue to keep this thing going. Yeah, you, the three seed, how do you guys feel about that and how do you feel about the matchup with Grand Canyon? Uh, we don't really care about seeding. At this point, everybody's earned and fought their way to get into the tournament, so we're just grateful for that. And we don't care who we play. You know, at the end of the day, you got to roll the ball out and we got to play. Yeah, I talked to, to you about it in Vegas after the West Coast Conference Championship. Uh, the way you guys beat St. Mary's, uh, I got to argue the best game you've played all season. Just how good do you guys feel heading into March Madness, knowing you're playing that type of level? Uh, we feel good. You know, we want to keep this thing going. Uh, it's good to go into March with you know some momentum, and um, you know we just got to keep we got to keep that same mentality. You know, chip on our shoulder, uh, underdog mentality, and just go out there like we're expected. To, like you know, everyone thinks we're going to lose. When you look at March Madness brackets, are you looking ahead at all? No, you, you're only guaranteed one game. So. Uh, looking ahead to any other game is going to take your mind off of the game that matters the most, which is the game that is guaranteed. So uh, we're only guaranteed one game, so we're focused on that.